And that's what I realized, like, most artists are exactly like that. Hey, if it organically happens, if I happen to be at the studio one day and Future happens to walk past my session, like, oh, this shit sound fun. What is that? And I'll hop, and I'll hop on. That's the only situation I'll take. And it's like, no, bro. This shit sometimes is sales. And no, See, I'm glad you said And that. the hard thing about sales is sometimes you got to cold pitch yourself to a motherfucker that don't care about you. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Key Glock says he stopped asking for features after he offered an artist one million dollars and got no response that's crazy that, that's a wild million dollar dub a million dollar dub we all you know we're gonna speculate on who that might be but let's listen to the clip of him talking about it hey man he gave me about he gave me two people i was like all right the, the one other person i know for sure he's gonna he's gonna go through the roof just because of who he is and his fan base and right. The machine he got behind him. So I'm like, don't just ask why I was like, uh. By the way, this is him saying the song that I blew up with. So it already had hella traction. This isn't just randomly asking for a future. This is a song that already became relevant in his niche. Yeah. You know? So it's not just like, oh, the music's trash and I'm at, I'm offering you a lot of money. This is a bona fide opportunity even for the artist itself. Kind of, you know. Yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. This could go for both of us. This could go and, and be a good look for both of us, especially when you got a million in your pocket. But he said, all right, don't just ask him. I was like, just offer him something. So I offered, I offered him a million dollars, literally a million dollars, a million dollars. Before I even physically had it all, I was going, hey, I'm taking this whole million, just go give it to him. Because you, you knew what it was worth. Exactly. But. After so long, like I said, I don't, I don't know the reason why, like, they never said no or never said they didn't want to do it. My first. All right. Offer the artist $1 million. The artist never even gave energy back, never even responded. Who do you think that could have been? My first guess was going to be Lil Baby, but I think Keegok and Lil Baby might have been starting to buzz around the same time. Maybe. I don't really, I don't have something. My next guess is Future. Your next guess is Future? Yeah, the only reason I think Future is because I remember this clip of uh, Meg Thee Stallion talking about how she had to pay Future like a quarter million for a feature or something like that. Yep. So I know Future's already within the, the realm of prices where an artist that doesn't know his price might think he would want that much, you know what I'm saying, or cost that much. So and then my next guess would be Drake. See, <laughs> I don't think it's Drake yeah. because it made it seem like the niche was right and was perfect. And it would, I think at some point he even said, like, it would be good if his fan base, my fan base, something like that. Drake isn't really, like, he's a, a steroid, right? He'll add some acceleration onto the track, but that's not necessarily, his fan base isn't necessarily key lock. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't say that, all right? Drake or Lil Baby, you see some people saying that. Folks got to learn. Oh, let me let me take a moment to say this. Someone in the comment section said, folks got to learn how to not take rejection personally. Now you stop asking other people just because one person didn't work out. Mm. Ah, that next collab with somebody else might have the biggest impact, but you'll never know because you let another artist action give you a head. Yeah, well, that's saying spin. They spin. I don't like that comment. You don't hit it with the heart. <laughs> I got you. I'm, 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 I'm going to give him a like. <laughs> Put your core. <laughs> But at the same time, I feel like a lot of times people just feel like someone's being emotional and are, are more worried about something than they are. And it might not even be that deep for them. He might just be like, I'm just keep going out. It might not be so tried and emotional. I don't know. That shit deep because he ain't put no features on his album. Man, he brags about it. Man, it's a part of his whole name. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You take it and you flip it. <laughs> and now I'm flipping it. I'm using this. Why do I need to even worry about that? I like that. I feel that, man. Because artists would do that, bro. Artists would be like, man, like, I don't know, man, that one dude scammed me for like $50. I'll never work with another marketer again. Okay. Like, what? Like, what? Man, I held this one artist one time for a feature. He said he was going to bed. It was 9 o'clock. I ain't working with these niggas no more ever again. He'd be like, bro, what are you talking about? But did he not? <laughs> he got songs with Dolph. That better, man, because they got family. And all right. So, he might just be like, I don't want to play the industry game. 
I want to build the way I want to build. It's no difference than artists saying, I don't want to have a label. You're right, but. I don't want to play the history game. And I'll only do stuff with people that I probably have a deeper relationship. I'm not about to just go shop and throw money at people. I'm going to focus on my. Yeah, and that's what I've realized. Like, most artists are exactly like that. Hey, if it organically happens, if I happen to be at the studio one day and and, and Future happens to walk past my session, like, oh, this shit sound fun. What is that? And I'll, hop, and I'll hop on. That's the only situation I'll take. And it's like, no, bro. This shit sometimes is sales. And no, see, I'm glad you said and that. The hard thing about sales is sometimes you got to cold pitch yourself to a motherfucker that don't care about you. I'm glad you said that. Because <laughs> I was about to say, a lot of artists are like, I'm not a salesman. I'm going to go back to this, this being creative thing because yeah. that's a different mode. I don't want to be a salesman. That's exactly what that is when you don't have a relationship. So what you can do best is more so have an A&R, put some stuff together, like, or, or, or a certain person on your team and manager who works on being, bringing all that. But you as the artist putting your energy into doing that a lot, I don't even think that works anyway. Quick second, have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move? The numbers start to grow. They might even go viral. But then fast forward a year from now, somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They drop back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Sky and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step -step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Grammy, back to the video. Yeah, Long term, he said, "Cali, do it." All right. Would you? Are you trying to set? Are you trying to throw a setup out here? Use a DJ Khaled? Are you trying to put him in a lot of fire? I'm just saying, man, he do it. You know? People don't look at him. They don't respect DJ DJ Khaled's artist. I feel like Lil Wayne do it. Lil Wayne do what? I feel like Lil Wayne tells the artist he wants to work with that he's the one that likes him. I feel like he's doing that. I don't think it's a team of people. Because the way the other artists talk about being blessed from the other side, if you sound like he reached out to them. Yeah. yeah so I feel like he's doing it. That's not selling. That's giving. That's blessing. I'm a little way. Oh, man. And I'm going to bless you at this moment. <laughs> you can turn it down, but it's probably not going to be turned down. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's like, I think it was it not. I don't think it was Young Blue. It was somebody turned. Oh, I think Rod Wave turned down a, Brick, a Drake. Oh, yeah, yeah. He did talk oh. about it. Yeah. Because it really didn't work. But generally speaking, if it works and it goes, most people are gonna say yes. They could have made that work. See, he's probably feeling, man. You got you are made that work, bro. You got like fifty songs made, probably more than that. You don't fit on none of these. I don't believe that. Drake was inspired by that. But I'm saying, man, artist, man, y'all be killing me with these invisible obstacles in your head. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes no problem with that. <laughs> I'm gonna guess many of the obstacles. I feel like you can have somebody on your team to do that though. Yeah, like, you still want to have somebody in place. I don't want to say don't stop, don't ever look for features again. But because you got to think, his background, he's more from the hustle background where they are the ones who are doing huh. that. Who the rapper mentality, right? Yeah. So instead of me being the hustle to actually, because a lot of artists never would have made that outreach anyway. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. So he like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to me and mine. Pay attention to my block. And then if something goes, it's going to go because I could win however I win it. And he had Dolph. So that's different. Wayne, again, he's out here blessing people. He's not asking people. There could be some arguments made for that. Because he's trying. He's Sean and Jacory. He's trying to get on his podcast. I'm a little Wayne. Nah, Wayne. Exactly. But you think you're above a no? Uh, if you got a meal, <laughs> I might think about it. <laughs> Like, you think you're above rejection? <laughs> Wayne? I mean, look, the humility says yes, but the reality says, <laughs> come on, we know it's up. But, this, but that's the thing, like you said, to your point, if his mindset is, I will never reach out for a feature ever again, yeah, I'm cool with that. If the mindset is, I will never do features, try to do features ever again, no, nah, I'm not like, cause, cause bro, from, like, the only people that lose in that situation are the fans, bro. Like, I would love, to hear like, like a like a Key Glock and Steve Lacey song, 
you probably ain't reaching out to Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey look like the type of motherfucker that don't answer, respond to emails. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's off the table right there. I love to hear a, a, a key Glock do something with like Kanye. I love to hear Kanye drop some spiritual soul for song and then, you know, that surprise feature you never see coming on the song. I just be like, damn, is that nigga? I love for that to be key Glock. I would love for key Glock to be the surprise feature on some shit. But it sounds to me like that's not going to happen because he don't want to do features no more. And as a fan, as a fan, I feel hurt. I feel personally attacked. They don't think about that, man. They don't think about the 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 collaborations that we as fans wish would happen. And that means that we are not even a step closer to any of those happening. Call it selfish. Call it what you want. But that's how I'm looking at it. Hey, if I was an artist, I'd be like, yep. <laughs> I'm not thinking about y'all. <laughs> Not in this case. Not in, look, I, I think it, it's hard for me to imagine it being future unless a couple circumstances, right? Because for one, future's giving the impression to me that he's about his money. Like, from a hustle perspective, not like, oh, man, I'm super worried about this stuff being corny or da, 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 like, oh, you got the bag? All right, cool. I pull up as long as the bag is right. All right? Like, Boosie's like that. All right? The bag, as long as the bag is right. It's right? like that. <laughs> oh, a meal, I know what to do with a meal. I know how hard it is to make a meal. Let me go ahead and get that, All right? Now, so maybe no, nobody got to him and he never actually heard. Or, again, assuming it was future, I'm just trying to figure out how it cannot work out. I would have to imagine that futures plugged in with some folk that Gotti, not Gotti, Dolph, my bad, that Dolph and Glock that's what I meant to say, Glock. We're beefing against. And maybe he, he didn't want to play no kind of size or get into something. That's the only type of thing that I could think would keep him from doing it. If it were future. To me, I feel like it was Chief Keef. I don't know why. That's what I'm saying. It made me lean. She, I don't know, not because they beef. I don't think they beef him, but just, I don't know why. It made Chief Keef come up. Who was the other person we had? Future we had? I said a little baby, but I think baby. I mean him a little baby was kind of coming up around. Yeah, it like, seemed like yeah. it would make sense. I'm, I'm trying to think of what rappers in his yeah, demographic would have been like baby. further. It would have been like, yeah, what I mean, a little baby. Future, maybe 21 Savage, but I think he has a song with 21 Savage, so I don't think of him. Who well, Maybe the baby. Um, who else been going crazy at that time in that demographic? That's all I can think of, man. I don't know. But y'all, if y'all feel like y'all might know who it is, let us know. 